Hey, good afternoon, everybody. And uh, I've got the, uh, the honor of being the last presenter of the day, so I'm just so pleased that there's so many of you here. So thank you very much for lasting the course. Um, and I will keep it short, um, but I would like to thank uh, Gash and his team for a fantastic day and a fantastic event and all of the work that they've done behind the scenes and making everything run smoothly. So, so well done, Gash. Thank you. So... <coughs> So, with my presentation, my name is Professor Hevin Rowlands, and I work at the University of South Wales. This is not me. Um, I'm just borrowing this presentation because it captures some of the things I want to talk about. Um, but it was interesting that Ariane this morning talked about digital innovation hubs. So, I'm coming back to his presentation, and interestingly, this seems to be the cover sheet that they use with the EU at the moment. Um, so, is it this one, Gash? Uh, well, yeah. Try this one, otherwise cut it out. Let's try it. This one? Yeah. Okay. So, Digital European Industry Initiative. The EU, if you haven't looked at EU documentation recently, digital innovation hubs pops up everywhere. Um, so, it's being embedded into the next work program. It's embedded into FP9. It's everywhere. Um, so, what I want to do is just to take you back to how that sort of transformation came about and our role in, in that process as well. Um, I think as was mentioned this morning, a lot of EU countries now are, are developing industry for um, strategies at country levels. Um, and these are some of the strategies that have been developed by EU countries. You will see the UK is not listed on there. I wonder why. Um, let's not go there. Let's not talk about Brexit today. Um, but earlier this year, or I think it was um, actually recently, um, there was a publication um, by, which I think it was commissioned by the UK government. It was um, commissioned and I think it was coordinated by Siemens and it was called Made Smarter Review and it was a review of the capabilities within the UK and looking at the sort of um, hub networks within the UK. The sort of hub networks within the UK that we probably know about are the catapult centres um, and these have been so sort of quite heavily funded by the UK government. So the catapult centres are distributed right across the UK. We have one here in Wales, which is the first one in Wales in Cardiff, which is a semiconductor catapult. I'll mention that in a second. Um, but essentially, this sort of review talks about how this sort of digital innovation hub network can be spread within the UK. But of course, across Europe, everybody's looking at this as well. So it's an opportunity for all these networks to merge and, and work together. And I'll, I'll show you briefly how that is happening. Um, I'll skip that one in this for a second. So we're looking at integrating and connecting um, all of these hubs together. It's interesting today we've been talking about Industry 4 as being about connecting everything together. This is connecting everything together at a network level um, to share experiences and to share um, knowledge. So we've already seen this. This is a hub. This is what hubs are about. Within this region, we have all of the actors within the sort of the hub concept. We've got SMEs, we've got large companies, we have Airbus, we have Tata Steel, um, we have industry associations. Tim was here this morning from the Automotive Forum. We have universities, we've got government. Geraint was here this morning from um, the WEFO, from the government sort of body. So we have all of these bodies and the challenge is trying to coordinate and pull them together. And that's the role of the hub. And we have lots of sort of mini hub initiatives operating in and around this region already. And I'm trying to pull all of those strings together. <coughs> so the hub concept is built on two EU programs, which you probably know about. It's the I4MS program, which is the Innovation for Manufacturing SME program, and also the Smart Anything Everywhere program. Um, and both of these programs had initiatives to set up pilot hubs and we were funded under this program to be one of the sort of pilot hubs um, looking at 
Industry 4 and Cyber Physical Systems and Sensor Technologies. And essentially all of the stuff you've seen today um, is sort of what we were sort of packaging as our use cases um, to support this sort of hub concept in this centre. So we had 29 member states, 29 hubs funded within this programme as the sort of pilot hubs. The I4MS program is now just starting on phase three. Um, we were working under phase two and supported under B in CPPS project. Um, for those of you who are still interested in getting funding for project, um, this project, Recon, Cell and Horse, have calls out at the moment. So if you go onto the I4MS website, I think this one is opening this week or next week, and this one is opening in uh, next month, in December. There will be calls for projects or experiments worth about 150,000 euros. So these are the last calls of that round of projects. So if you're interested in getting involved, just look at the website, put a consortium together. The criteria is there has to be a manufacturing SME where you're actually um, developing the project in the company. Um, the I4MS program has now evolved into its next phase and there are four projects which will be, um, which are starting and they will be calls for projects probably later in 2018 for those programs. I'm not sure what, I can't remember what all of these are but look at the website. This one is logistics for, F, for uh, manufacturing SMEs and other, other focused sort of projects as well. <coughs> Um, for the Smart Every Smart Anything Everywhere program, these were the projects for the first phase, and then these are the projects that have been taken on in the second phase. And I know, Gash, you had a project under the CPSC um, program, and maybe other, others were, were involved in some of these projects as well. At EU level, what the um, EU are doing, which is coordinated by TNO, is developing a catalogue of hubs right across the EU. Um, so they're looking at a catalogue, and these are what hubs that are already sort of inputted into the catalogue. So you can go onto the website and you can zone in and find out what hubs are available in your area and, and so on um, to, to get some information and some perhaps some expertise in, in the region. So these are sort of ports of call, I guess, for SMEs where they need support to engage with Industry 4 and other similar technologies. Um, this presentation was uh, presented in Spain, so there was an example there of what the hub network looks like in, in Spain. Um, and then finally, um, okay, I think this um, portal is going to be open um, very soon for anybody to input their information in. So if somebody has a sort of an idea for a hub, they, they can go onto the website and, and register themselves. But you can search the database by country, by um, uh, specialist sector and so on. So it's, quite, it's going to be quite a useful resource, I think, in, in the future. And then um, finally, these are some future projects. There is a project to develop hubs in Central and Eastern Europe. Um, so if you're in those areas, there, there could be some opportunities there for some projects um, supported through um, the hub projects. And of course, within the um, Horizon 2020 work program for 2018-2020, there's quite a lot of emphasis now on hub projects and there will be more um, emphasis on projects in FP9, I'm, I'm sure of it. And I hope we'll be able to participate as UK members. I'm sure we will in one way or another. And then these are <coughs> some projects that are coming up in 2018 in, in the ne next work programme. So these work programmes are already out there and uh, these are just examples of calls related to digital innovation hubs. Okay, so what I do, switch escape? Okay. And then, if you just pick up your um, <coughs> okay, so finally, just to uh, finish off, um, 
at an event in Madrid on the 21st of September. Um, all 29 hubs got together as, as the sort of close off of that project and we all presented a poster of our sort of regional hub. So this is our poster. So the partners were um, the University of South Wales, um, GASH and Control 2K, um, University, um, Cardiff Metropolitan University and EEF just to look at the sort of region, to do a stakeholder analysis and to see what the region needed. Um, interestingly, on the TRL levels, you can't see the details, but some of the projects we've heard from you today are operating at the lower TRL levels, TRL level one to six typically, I saw on some of the slides. The function of the hub is really to bridge that gap and to look at higher TRL levels. So TRL levels, seven to eight typically, so not quite commercialization, but to support companies with applications. So to take the ideas from the EU projects and see how they can be implemented in, in companies. Um, so we are looking now at how we can consolidate what we've done and maybe a question to finish off to everybody here We've all seen the demos, we've all sort of been exposed to all different projects and things. What should uh, a digital innovation hub look like to enable SMEs to engage with the technology? And, and I'm just thinking, I've been thinking about this throughout the day, this has been a fantastic <coughs> event, but Gash, a question for you. Um, could you do this every week? <laughs> Uh, I could. <laughs> yes, yeah. But, but, uh, but in terms of a, a real question is, what, what, what could be done to bring more companies in to expose them to these new technologies? So, you know, that, that's what we're sort of looking at. What can we do to, to take this sort of to that next level? So, thank you very much. Thank you much. Yes. And something to think about.